Greetings, ladies and gentle readers. I'm Dwyer, and I just finished reading book one and two of The Legend of Randuli Ghost Hound, a lit RPG adventure. And you know what? I don't think about this book. It's a very, very tough one. Very, very, very tough one to review. Because, like, like right off the bat, the name itself kind of jumps out at you. It's like the, red, the legend of who's a was a what? Randiddly Ghost Hound. Like, okay, that's certainly a name. And in this book, very, very quickly, you find out that the main character, because it's being a lit RPG, needs to acquire things to level up. And the thing that he needs to acquire most are personal points. I think that's what it stands for anyway. They just refer to it as PP. Yeah, uh, that guy, he's he, he's all about the PP. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing he loves going after. He can't get enough of it. So immediately I thought to myself, okay, this is a satire on the lit RPG genre. It's just going to be kind of like a little funny kind of thing, and it's going to be kind of bad, and then do away with it. And, I mean, I don't know. I, it didn't read like a satire in book one. Book one didn't read a satire at all. Main character was underground when the system essentially turned everyone into a video game. System comes in, you know the drill if you've read Lit RPG. System comes in, their stats and what have you. He's underground at the time, so where he is gets turned into a dungeon. And it's way, way high level and immediately like, okay, this is where he's like, oh, I'm secretly amazing and I'm going to start killing all the high level things, right? Nah, he almost dies repeatedly. Yeah, it turns out those things are much higher level than him when he has no skills at all. Zero, zilch. So he's got to like use the good old thinky brains to try to get around the stuff, right? And that is good. That is what I liked about it. Like, okay. This is, I like where this is going. As long as we don't have a training montage and then suddenly he's, you know, punching all the monsters and killing them just like that. Essentially, a lot of authors um, in the RPG genre likes to begin off with a woe is me character, I'm in this place, and then they go and, I don't know, punch cats for an hour and then suddenly they can take out anything that they want, right? And that's not what happened here. That's not what happened here. He needed to use his head to get out of the position that he found himself in. That was pretty cool. He interacts with the character while he's down in there. And it's like, okay, now he's going to be turned in. No. Like, you're waiting for all of the worst tropes of this genre to be like, hey, I'm here. Let's get going. Gotta, gotta make up for lost time. But no. It didn't happen. And then he gets out of the dungeon. Very tiny spoilers. He gets out of the dungeon, and he asks to interact with the rest of the world, not being a people person. And some of them treat with him suspicion, don't like him. Some of them are like, eh, I guess you're cool. Some of them just don't really care. It's like, okay, it feels like he actually fits into this world. So we got character interaction. We have a, char an, um, a main character that just doesn't immediately kill everything because the author wants it to be that way. Interactions are feeling organic. Conversations seem like they make sense. Uh, so what's up with the Ran Diddly Ghost Hound and him needing to acquire all the... Uh, it, okay. I, I get it. 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 Like, this, for example... Are the lit RPGs apparently in like the last 90 days? It's, ooh, what was that one actually? World End 3? I'm gonna go look at that one. Oh, wait, DB King. Eh, maybe not. Um, but yeah, like you can see there's just pages and pages and pages, right? Of things that have come out in the last 90 days alone. So. If you named your character Legend of, you know, Billy Bob Smith, you're probably not going to get all of the attention that something weird and kind of clickbaity, click like Rant Diddly Ghost Hound. Well, that sounds okay. That sounds weird. What's that out about? You click it, right? So, okay, fine. It's clickbait. 
I get it. I get the name's clickbait. Cool. And a little bit tongue-in-cheek there. It's like, and now he needs to go after the horse and the boy. And there's a beep. Okay, okay, okay. You can totally forgive that because the book stands up aside from that, not because of that. All right, cool. This alone, I would give maybe a B. High B, maybe a low A. Definitely an A in the lit RPG genre. Lit RPG genre, definitely. Overall fantasy, yeah, probably a B. Probably, probably a B book. Probably a B book. That is book one. Book one, book one, book one. <laughs> Had a lot in it. Character being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Having to use his brain to figure it out. Having to adjust to life outside of, you know, his initial area and, like, reintegrate into society afterwards. Having to make, you know, connections. Needing to figure out what's going on in the world at large. Needing to find his friends because the whole world kind of got, like, shuffled like a deck of cards. Like, things are over here and things are over here and they're not really in their right spots anymore. So it just had a nice, a nice amount of stuff that kept my interest and wanting to just read more and more and more and more and more of the book. You even had a little bit of a political structure kind of taking place where multiple towns get erected in post-apocalyptic, you know, Mad Max era. And how they were going to be interacting with each other. And like, well, how are they, the bigger towns, the littler towns going to like interact? Are they going like to take each other out? Are there going to be war? Are they going to get to get along? What's the dynamics of that? It's just, just a lot of just a lot of really great stuff coming together. But I'm not gonna lie. Book two has scared me. Book two has scared me, and I had to stop and make the video before I read book three. Because book two takes a hard turn. Remember when I was always expecting, you know, satire and taking a hard left and being like the worst of the tropes of the genre? Well, the book, the book doesn't start off that way, but he meets back up with the guy who helps him in book one in the dungeon, right? In that place? Yeah, he helps him out by getting transported to his world and suddenly we are in the worst of the cultivation trope genre that we've ever seen where people are, you know, killed because of in this case, like, the color of their tassel. They have to pick a tassel, and he, he picked green, and green's a bad color to them. So he want to kill him and take uh, the trophy, because he picked the wrong color. So, yeah, he, he didn't have, like, an orange or a red. Or maybe even a, no 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 he picked a green and green 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 bad they got they got bad they got bad history with green who got kill him completely arbitrary pick they're like yeah you you pick green we'll go kill you now really what what happened to book one what what happened what happened to you. What happened to you? I read book one. It was, and then what is that? But uh, maybe they're make, maybe they're maybe they're building up to something. I don't know. It's like you got that, and then like again, worst of the cultivation tropes where you've got I am of the I don't know flatulent mountain sect, and I'm gonna fight and kill you for the honor of my dead horse or whatever. I don't know. But uh, maybe it's building up to something because there's like a hint in that world of things going really wrong. Like there's a whole group of people that are essentially zombies where the magic that the system has brought in isn't like given to everybody. There seems like a finite amount of it going around. And so after years and years and years and years and decades, centuries, millennia, I don't know, of this being in your world. This kind of gets concentrated amongst, you know, the few. And so a lot of the masses are, like, starved of this energy and they turn into, like, this hungering, slavering ghouls who want this by any means necessary. 
So maybe we're, I feel like maybe we're going somewhere in book three, but I'm, oh, I think I'm going to read something else before I actually dive into it because I'm a little nervous to see what happens in the next book. Like book two is okay. Feels like we're going somewhere. It's not entirely sure I like where we're headed, but book one was really good. So I'm going to give it a try. I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope, 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 hope. That book two is fine. Gonna hope for it. I'm gonna completely overlook some of the names that I'm seeing so far pop up. He's helping. He's helping his mentor. His world is seems to have been like almost completely destroyed. You got a lot of people suffering. So I, I can see there's like a cauldron just being like mixed here of interesting ingredients that I think can really pop off in book three. So cross your fingers. You can tentatively read this if you're into the lit RPG genre, but I'll get back to you on book three to see if you should continue from here. So far, I like what I'm seeing so far from good old Norit Flood Puddles or whatever, whoever, whoever this person is. What do you think? I'm, I'm going to jump over to a book instead and then get back to this. You can tell me. Is it good? Is, is, is it safe to keep reading? Not? Let me know. Comment down below. Be back on book three. Hopefully, it's going to be another grand slam like book one is. Cross fingers. See you next time.